Is it here yet? No, still showing 7.3. I'm sure they haven't forgotten. I tell you what, they better not have forgotten. That's right. What about now? Yes, yes, it's here. Google Play Services 7.5 just got installed. It's here, it's here. Welcome to Google Play Services 7.5. This is an epic release with lots of new features that allow you to build better apps. That's right, because that's what this is all about, enabling you to build better apps. We're so excited, and there's so much new stuff in here that we must get started right away. Google Cloud Messaging is one of the most powerful APIs in Google Play services, providing messaging between your mobile app and a backend server. And now we've made it even better with support for topic-based subscriptions. Before topics, all the apps running on all the devices had to filter out messages that were no relevant, because it was not possible for the running app to tell GCM which messages it was interested in. Well, with the new topic-based subscriptions, this problem is solved. Simply define a topic string that you subscribe to. For example, topics hockey. And then GCM will send messages only to the devices that have subscribed to the topic. This saves bandwidth, battery resources, and you write less code. That's why this is amazing. And the subscription filters are really flexible too. You can use any classification after the topics keyword to define your topics. For example, the latest episode of my favorite show, my favorite hockey team, or my only stock. In this release, we also have the GCM Network Manager, which will schedule your background tasks whenever most appropriate for efficiency and battery savings. Perfect when syncing data with servers when new information becomes available. Using GCM Network Manager, you can configure tasks to run either as one-offs, meaning that they run once or periodically. And in addition to that, it's also possible to specify conditions that must be satisfied before the task is executed. For example, the task probably requires network. But it goes even beyond that. You can also require that the network is unmetered, for example, a Wi-Fi network, or that the device needs to be charging while executing the task. So lots of good flexibility here. And that brings us over to... Yep, that's right, we got a new API. Let's welcome the App Invites API with a round of applause. How many times per day do you receive generic information from big corporations that want your attention? Lots of times. And most of the time you ignore them just because it's coming from a big corporation and it's a generic message. But what if you instead received a recommendation from a friend? That's a completely different situation. Your friend invested time and energy to send you a recommendation. You better look at that. That's what App Invites is all about. And now we're launching it in beta, enabling your users to invite their friends to check out your app, like a friend recommendation. They just select the people they want to invite from their Google contacts or use email or SMS. And it's even possible to have a deep link in the invite, so users can get directly to a particular piece of content in the app that you are recommending. Now over to Cast, that allows your app to show things on many millions of displays. And in this release, Cast includes a new API called the Remote Display API. Wouldn't it be great if an app on your device could display content on the Cast receiver and at the same time show other content on your device? That's exactly what the Remote Display API enables. With this API, your app will have two screens it can render content to. One of the screens is displayed by the cast receiver on the Remote Display, and the other is displayed on your device. This means you could, for example, create a game where you see the action on a big display and you use your device as the remote controller for the game. And hey! Now the Maps API is now natively supported on Android Wear devices. It's now possible to present fully interactive maps on a wearable device that includes scrolling and zooming. You can also show Street View, display the user's current position, use light mode maps, and much, much more. 
Another feature in this release is Smart Lock for Password, which allows you to be automatically signed in to a Chrome website or Android app with your Google account. Let's look at an example how this can work. Say you sign into a website and choose to save the password. Then this password gets securely saved in the cloud. At a later time, you decide to start a corresponding Android app. The Smart Lock for Password API can then allow a sign-in simply by selecting the stored credential. This is possible since you have previously decided to store the password from Chrome, and the Android device has your Google account registered. This is just one use case for Smart Lock for Password, which has many more features, so be sure to check out the details in the reference sections at the end of this video. And rounding this release off with news in Google Fit that now supports a very large number of exercise types. Here they are, all of them. And the Java doc will even include descriptions on how to physically perform them. And for each of these, you can record the number of repetitions, the resistance, and the resistance type. And while I have no idea what most of these are, there is one I do recognize, bicep curl. Let's try that out in the real world. <laughs> That's it for this release video of Google Play Services 7.5. But be sure to check out these resources as well. Now it's your turn to build those better apps. So go out there and create some great apps. And don't forget to tell us all about it.